Thank you so much for tuning in to KEXP. We are listener-powered radio at 90.3 FM in Seattle and streaming worldwide at kexp.org. You can also find us on our free mobile apps. I'm Cheryl Waters. I'm down here in the KEXP studios with a band that has been enchanting me for some time now. It's Yule. Welcome. Hi. So happy to have you here. I'm and so happy to be here. Soft Scars, absolutely loving it. I'm so excited to hear you perform live. Are you ready? Yes. Thank you so much. It's you live on KEXP. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I when I leave my flesh He can download my mind And pick out the pretty parts for you So beautiful. You're listening to Yule live here in the KEXP studios playing songs from the new album Soft Scars.
You're listening to Yule live on KEXP.
Listening to Yule live here in the KEXP studios, the new album Soft Scars out on Ninja Tune Records. That was amazing. Thank you so much for performing with us today. Thank you for having us. I love it. And Nat, you're someone who's mostly worked alone. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the first time you're touring with a live band. What brought you together with Ryan and Sasami and how has playing shows with a live band changed the way that you perform and just bring yourself out into the world? So I actually started as like a bedroom producer. So I was writing music all on my own, like me on Ableton, mixing, mastering, everything, songwriting on my own. And only in Soft Scars, it's been much more collaborative. And I realized how much joy that brought me because um, I feel like when you figure out your sound, it's interesting to see how other people's input integrates with your aesthetics sonically. And so I actually found Sasami. Well, I don't know if I found you, but I saw you open for Mitski at the Roundhouse. And I was like, who is she? That's so, how we all feel when we first see Sasami. And so, and then I, I found, I messaged on Instagram. We had a lot of mutual friends, and that's how, I, how we, I was like, "Do you want to play guitar for me on my tour?" And she was really down. And Ryan, I met through Sasami. Um, but everyone knows that Scorpio and Sagittarius are very hectic, and Ryan enables like very hectic behavior in the band. So I don't know. <laughs> Well, I love to see how happy you all are and just see the interaction with you even before the performance started today. It's just so joyful and playful and fun. And I've read in interviews before where you've talked about how lonely it felt being on tour and on stage by yourself and that you just yearn to be around people that you love and respect. And it feels like you've done that and that it's just both creatively and emotionally nourishing for you. Yeah, you know, it's like it's it's strange because when you read stuff on like, the internet people were like oh you look so happy now but it's like you know I'm just I'm trying to surround myself with more love I feel like my life has always been very solo very isolated and even in music making it hasn't really been collaborative as much as it is now so I realized like yeah it's much I feel like touring is a whole different beast you know from like writing the record and it takes a lot of like it's like militarized training almost 
I know there's something about touring that you need to get right, you know, in order to enjoy it. And you feel like you're getting there? I feel like, I feel like with tour, I mean, I love playing shows because it makes me feel like my music is real and I have fans and stuff, you know, like, whoa, like, I don't know, when, when everything's online, it's like, you don't know? I don't know, it's like, is it real? You know, so I want to be able to enjoy that and take in, like, the adrenaline from, like, playing live, but also, like, be able to take care of myself almost, you know? Do you feel like you can be yourself when you're performing? I feel like this is the kind of music I was playing a lot with my band as a teenager. We were called Riot Diet, by the way. <laughs> and actually, my guitarist, Marcus, he's, um, he's um, I, 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 like, caught up with him recently. He's doing well. But, yeah, like, I feel like at the time, I didn't know how to make music like that alone as a as a, like a producer you know you needed like really special equipment or like you needed like sessionists and stuff and I guess over time I just found people who believed in my project and well speaking of I heard that you wrote this amazing album in the span of just one week can you talk a little bit about that process one week is that true wait what are your sources <laughs> from where <laughs> I'm not sure exactly where I read that, but no. more than one place. No, I did not. I'm, I didn't say I wrote in one week. <laughs> I did write... Look um, at me spreading rumors already. Yeah, no, spread misinformation. Um, I wrote this record in like... I think it was like just below two years. Oh, that's not even close to a week. Yeah, so it was when I was writing Glitch Princess, I was already writing Soft Scars. Um, so Don't Be Sonia and Beauty was supposed to be in Soft Scars. But I was like, no, I want to put it in the record to hint at the, what's coming next, you know? I like to put little Easter eggs in the current album to give hints about what the next one will sound like. Um, but yeah, it's like, I was touring last year too, um, and it's really hard to write music when you're on the road a lot, or like when you're flying everywhere and like, you know, when your producers, you work with them remotely, like my um, my exec producer for this record is Kin, who Kin Leon's amazing ambient um, artist um, from my hometown as well, Singapore. Um, so we were like both like we were separated and we were both in the same city, and then it was just weird to like work in person and then apart. So that's why it took a bit longer. See, in my mythology, the two of you hold up somewhere for a week and did the whole record, but I don't know if I we, want to stick with that because I like the Easter egg. We wrote, okay, too. maybe we wrote like Sulky Baby Daisies, <laughs> XWX, um, That's couple a lot. tracks. Yeah, we wrote like five songs in one sitting in like a week, but like polishing took like, you know, a while. Because like Aphex Twin Flame had, oh, no, not Aphex Twin Flame. That one we did in one take in Abbey Road Studios. Um, I think it was like daisies or something. We couldn't figure out the end. And then we were like, oh, why don't we just slow it down? We like, we like, we like automate the metronome and everything. And like, we came up with the ending. So yeah, uh, it was kind of an iconic. It sounds like a really fruitful project that the two of you working together uh, came out with this incredible record. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like it's very rare to find someone who appreciates like, a specific era of music well speaking of which i feel like there's a mix of nostalgia tinge alternative rock with this glitch core that is so fascinating and sonically intriguing do you recall how you kind of decided to bring those two things together or did it just come innately to you so when i when i write a record i sort of have an idea of what kind of elements i i'm drawn to and i've always been drawn to noise and glitch sounds and um very just purely electronic production. But I also have a deep love for guitar music and actually folk music too and country music. Ooh. And um, I guess like Ken and I were listening to like the specific era of artists that were writing alternative um, rock, I guess, um, from early 2000s and the 90s. So we integrated that kind of compositional element into how we usually produce music. And I think there's some artists, like contemporary artists out there who are doing some similar stuff. Um, but I think 
like, I just like told them, can you imagine like country music, but with like auto-tuned, like vocals, like that's kind of, that's kind of hard. Like, you know, like hard style folk. I don't know, like cyber twee. <laughs> so that was what we we're trying to go for, I think. Well, sonically, it's really exciting, I feel like. And you're really digging into some deep things in this song as in the songs as well. I heard you were doing a lot of personal journaling and healing through this record. Oh yeah. Tell me a little bit about the songs. Oh yeah, so actually, you know what? It's funny you mentioned that today, because I stopped writing for a bit because I realized that, you know, when you do something so often, there's like a pattern and you start seeing things like like a cycle of stuff. Mm -hmm. So when I was writing my journals, like the poetry for the music, I would mark the page as like a scar entry. So each song was like like the most pivotal moments of my life, I think. They were like either tr really traumatizing or I knew this would change me emotionally. Or it was just like heavy, you know, heavy entries. So I realized like, I was doing that a lot and looming on sp specific like themes, which I thought was quite toxic. So I had to stop writing to try and rewire like the way I perceive my physical reality. Cause I feel like there's so much you can put into a song thematically as an artist, but like also it's a way of release. So once that's over, you close the book, you know, it's like you kind of imprint that scar and it's gone. So that's kind of, the, I feel like that's why I called it Soft Scars, because it's a collection of those scar entries. Uh, I think that's a beautiful, beautiful way to bring that to the forefront and close that book for yourself. Although, do you feel like you open it again every night when you perform these songs? You know, it's interesting because I, I'm so focused on the performativity, like how well we're like in time we are, that it's not emotional anymore, but then sometimes it's like, some nights it's like, I can't sing because I'm choking up. Like, I'm getting really emotional. <laughs> and like, I can't, like, it's more like being in the middle of that. When you twer, it's like, I don't want to be so engulfed in my own sorrow all the time. There's, there's a limit, I think, I can take of that. And it's about controlling that amount. I feel like that's the beauty of performance and also sharing your music. Well, there's a real synchronicity between the three of you. I appreciate you so much coming today to perform the songs from this beautiful album, Soft Scars. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us. It's been such a pleasure. I want to thank Yule for stopping by today to perform songs from the new album, Soft Scars. And thank you so much to our wonderful listeners and viewers for making sessions like this possible. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, get notification every time we launch a new video, and find out more about us at kexp.org. We are listener-powered, supported by you. You can make a gift anytime. Once again, thank you so much. It's Yule, live on KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.